Hi, welcome to the Catholic Corner. I'm Monsignor Walter Nolan. What comes to mind when you hear the word Titanic? Most of us remember the famous ship built to be unsinkable, yet it tragically sank, taking over 1,500 lives. Some of our younger viewers may remember the movie about the tragedy love story with actors Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet and the famous soundtrack to the movie sung by Celine Dion called My Heart Will Go On. My guest today is going to tell us about a very, very special person, her great uncle, her great uncle Thomas. Great uncle Thomas was on the Titanic and he didn't survive the sinking. But she's going to tell us how his heart goes on even today. See, her great uncle Thomas was a Catholic priest. Father Thomas had more than one opportunity to board a lifeboat, but he refused. He stayed in the icy water with others who didn't make it to the lifeboats. He stayed, he prayed with them, and he prayed with them to the end. My guest is Joan Biles Morris Barry. Joan's a graduate of Georgian Court University where she learned, earned a BA in math and an MBA. Currently, Joan works for the state of New Jersey as a software development specialist. Joan is a widow. She and her late husband, John, had three sons. She also occupies some of her time as a religious education teacher in a parish down the Jersey Shore at Bayhead, Sacred Heart in Bayhead. Joan, God bless you. Welcome to the Catholic Corner. Thank you, Monsignor. Can't wait to be, get into the story about your uncle. Gosh almighty. You know, it just, I've always said, you know, family is, family is so great and family stories have to be told and told and told. So tell me a little bit about your great uncle Thomas, how you maybe first heard about him and the Titanic when it was well, sinking. ever since I was born, my mother, you know, as I was growing up, I always heard about my mother's martyr uncle. Um, and you know, as you get older, you learn a little bit more about the story. And the martyr uncle was, her father was from England. He had immigrated to the United States, set up a business on Wall Street. His name was William. And his brother was an English priest, you know, was a priest back in England. So when my grandfather met my grandmother and they fell in love, and they became engaged. He sent for his brother in England to come over to officiate the marriage ceremony. Wow. So, you know, it was great because the brothers hadn't seen each other in a long time. The whole family was going to be together again. And he was sailing over and he um, sent, the, I have a postcard in here, sailing on the Titanic, leaving on the 10th. I'll be there on the 19th, I think. So that. That's, and then, then my mother went on to tell me the story of how his bravery, you know, once, once I became old enough so to be able to understand. So he actually was a passenger on, on the ship yes, coming Yes, he was a second class passenger. Oh, second wow. class passenger, yes. Somehow I was thinking that maybe he was a no. chaplain or something. No, 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 no. He did get permission from the captain. He had brought his portable altar, altar with him. Sure. So he did get permission from the captain to be able to say mass. And he did say mass a number of times before that tragedy happened. Sure. With some of the passengers, that happens all the time. You know. so he was second class and third class is what I heard. He said mass too, but I wonder if there were first class passengers who were Catholics. I wonder if they went down to his mass. Just, just knowing that I've done some things like that, yes, I, I would not be surprised if they like did. Molly Brown was a Catholic. So I always wondered if maybe she went down to his mass. But Could very well have happened. Anyway, I'm, the, that's how I first heard as I was growing up, my mother told me about him. So, so, so your great uncle was a priest in England. And do you know anything about uh, like the childhood between, say, your great uncle and your, and your grandfather would be? Yes, that's really what leads to the story and makes it a lot more interesting. My great grandfather was a congregational minister, Reverend Alfred Holden Biles. And he was a very well-known minister. 
And this was now your, the, 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 the father, father of your of, grandfather. And, and the uncle. father of Father and Biles, uncle. right. <laughs> so he was a congregational minister. He had seven children. His um, uncle was a member of parliament. His father had started the Bradford Observer, which was a big newspaper in England. They were a very well-known, respected family. And he had these two sons, Rossell, who was his old, the oldest, and William, my grandfather. And they, when they started in higher education, they started to question their faith, the faith of their father. And they began to look at things and question things, and they started looking at the Catholic Church. And my, my grandfather first converted, and Father, well, Russell was his name. He took the name Thomas when he was ordained a priest in 1903. But when they looked at the, the their church, compared to their father's, the Catholic Church compared to their father's church, they would mention things, I have a lot of letters that they mm -hmm. wrote back and forth with each other, and you know, they would mention things like, Jesus said on this rock, I will build my church, and they thought they could trace Jesus to the Catholic Church, that that was the true mm -hmm. church. And then they would, I remember my grandfather making the comment, how can we go to church over here and the communion is just the symbol of Christ but then two blocks away at the Catholic Church it's the true body and blood of Christ and all these inconsistencies didn't make sense but they finally they prayed and through a lot of prayer and conversations and I'm sure they spoke to a lot of intelligent people and religious people and they converted much to the dismay of their parents how old were they, Joan, when they converted? And, they did, and did they convert at the same time? It was within a few years of each other. Okay, but it wasn't like the same day they converted. No, no, it was... Uh, Who my, was older, your, your, your great uncle or your No, grand, Father uh, Thomas was older. Father Thomas was older. Yes. And did he convert he first? No, William converted William first. William converted first, wow. Yes. yes, William converted first when he was going to become a Jesuit. But the Jesuits turned him down for his health. Oh. So he didn't, and he instead came to America and started a business, and Father Thomas went ahead and converted. So they turned him down for his health, and how long did he live? He, how long he would wasn't he, really old, because okay. he died before I was born. Um, but he lived a good, a good life. He lived a good I mean, life, good yes, to and he was healthy. Had family, yeah. and had sure. Fam he had four daughters, <laughs> four daughters, and my, my mother was the youngest of the four, and the oldest daughter was a Sacred Heart nun, and oh she went gosh. on to live to be 93 years old, and she, yes. So now we, we have uh, uh, Father Thomas, taking the name of Thomas anyway as a priest. Do you know anything about the struggles of him uh, telling the family he was going to, I mean, one uh, thing is converting, the other is to become a Catholic priest. Well, I just know that they were just so upset that he had converted. I don't know. Once it got to the point of him actually becoming a priest, I don't have any letters that actually tell me anything. And like I said, my grandfather died before I was born. And first generation, my mother, they, they don't ask those kind of questions yeah. because it's... Different times. They, 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 they didn't share as much so as we do today. I would like to know that, but no. But they were very, very upset. But on his deathbed, there was a letter that Father Biles spent the whole night with his father and they made amends so that's beautiful that, and that's the way it should be I, I think even our pope francis talks in those kind of beautiful terms of, of, of sharing gifts with each other so tell me you, you, you have a lot of information that you've collected through the family i guess is that right it was all in the family yes um what did, uh, did, did now father thomas was coming over on the titanic as a passenger and naturally, as a priest, he would say his prayers, he would do Mass, and uh, those things would be there. What, what else did he do uh, as a passenger? It's interesting that you say that, because fortunately, he wrote a letter when he left the Titanic. When he left on the Titanic, yeah. when he was still, um, they were in between Cher Cherbourg and Southampton. And he says, on board the ship, one has little to do, so I will start to write a letter to you. This was written to his housekeeper, Miss Fields. And then he says, um, it's foreboding, he says, the worst thing that's happened to me so far is I've lost my umbrella. And then he went on to say, you know, he it describes the ship. 
And second class, he was second class. Since first class you saw in the movie was very luxurious, but second class was still pretty nice. And he describes the ship, and he mentions that there are two other priests on board, and that because they're going to be leave, landing in Queenstown, he won't be able to say mass the next morning, but afterwards he'll be able to say mass every day for the second and third class passengers. And he mentions the two other priests. One was a Benedictine from Bavaria, and the other a secular from Lithuania. Oh. And then he ends the letter with, I trust Ben went home all right on Monday evening. I will write as soon as I get to New York, and you should probably have my letter between the 24th and the 29th. Believe me, yours truly, TRDB. That's how he signed all his letters. This is just a copy, but that's that. That is. I mean, that's it, it's almost, just, it is. Listen, that's a wonderful, wonderful gift to have in your family. I know. It is. It really is. And it also just tells you the the the, the, and so that, that the divine sort of and the human are always what, coming together. What what happened while he was on the ship? And then after the disaster, a lot of survivors told my grandfather because he went and visited. They told him what he did on the ship, that he did. He heard confessions all day that Saturday, you know, just normal confessions. No one knew anything was going to happen to them. And they just went and, and he had mass with all the passengers. So he was, he was a priest doing his priestly duties on board. Wow. Wow. That's, that's and looking forward to coming over to America for the first time. Like the Pope just came to America for the first time and he was going to see his brother and perform this wedding. And, the newspaper said there were a thousand guests. I can't imagine a thousand guests, but that's what they said. Holy smokes! Do you have some other uh, other stories uh, about him on the Titanic and, well, and after, what was happening? And well, when the when the Titanic hit the iceberg, he was on deck, and it was eleven o'clock at night, and he was reading his breviary. Am I Brevery, saying yeah. breviary? And um, after that. I guess as the things got worse, he went down to the third class and he calmly had people follow him up to the boat deck, all the third class passengers. And he stayed with them and loaded them into the lifeboats and prayed with them and heard their confessions. And um, then after the, there was one seaman and he kept saying to Father, Father, please get in the boat. You know, he was worried about this priest. He said, Father, you, there's a seat. We have a seat for you. And he said, no, no. And I don't know if he ever said no, but he didn't take the seat. And, uh, you know, this is firsthand testimony from survivors that told these stories. They told these stories to your family? Told these stories to my family and to the newspaper. Because uh, right. I have a lot of newspaper articles, too, that, where all these things are quoted. But they told them directly to my grandfather, because he went to St. Vincent's to visit the survivors after. Now, did you have these newspapers in the family, or, or have you researched them out yourself? I have them in the family. Wow. There is a priest in Illinois. His name is Father Scott Archer, and he has become a big fan of Father Biles. And he's researched a lot, and he found, he's found additional articles. So if you ever want any more interest about him, there's his website is www.fatherbiles.com. And he has a lot of information about Father Biles. Much of it is my information, but he's added to it. Sure. Are there any like personal stories that you have that uh, him helping people in boats or, or, or praying with children or, uh, or sharing the rosary with people? Well, I think about him praying the rosary. That must have been pretty special when he was praying the rosary because, you know, after the, all the ships had gone, people remember hearing him praying the rosary and they could look back and they saw the waves crashing over him and he had hundreds of people of all denominations kneeling around him. And that was the last image they had of him. So he was praying the rosary. So the, so the, the last image that people had of, of your great uncle was him praying the rosary with people with the waves that we're going to be over. going to God in a very short time. But can you imagine oh. them praying the rosary with Father Biles and our Holy Mother reaching out to them as, you know, their last minutes, as, as 
after the, the last minutes were over. And so as I look at Father Biles, the thing that's so special is he was really hope for the hopeless because they had nothing. They, they were going to drown. They knew they were going to drown. So the only thing they had was this priest who stayed with them and prayed with them and gave absolution. But what a blessing in, 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 in a way, if you're going to be going to God, not so bad to be going with the Blessed Mother's prayers on your lips and, uh, and, and knowing that a, uh, a priest of your faith has given you absolution. Wow. Wow. It really, it's, it, it really, it, it's... And, and even for Father Thomas, I mean, as, as, a, as a priest myself, to think that your last acts on earth, so to speak, are bringing God's grace and God's mercy and God's forgiveness, it's... Well, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I have this letter written, one of the, um, the memorial cards that were sent to my grandfather were uh -huh. so touching. And this one from the bishop in, um, in England said, he says in here, um, that I'm much more inclined to ask him to pray for me to get through his intercessions through uh, to always perform my duty as he performed his. He died a martyr of charity, performing the most perfect act of love of God and of his neighbor. So, and then he ends this letter saying that um, he's, he, he wants to give blessings to the new marriage because they had found another priest and gotten married. You know, they didn't postpone the wedding. And um, he said, but I'm much more inclined to ask you for blessings because you were blessed by our Father in heaven as the martyr by your martyr brother and by the vicar of Rome because they had received a blessing from the Pope because Pius X declared him a martyr. Golly. Of all the stories, Joan, that you have from your family or letters or, or even newspapers, whatever, which one touches you the most? I think the, um, this one, I'm not gonna open it. But after they were married by another priest, my grandparents went to, to uh, New Jersey on a honeymoon. And um, he wrote this letter to his m new mother-in-law. And it was just so... This is your grandfather's letter to, to his mother-in-law? So sweet. I mean, it was so sweet. He talks about going to St. Vincent's and meeting other survivors, and everybody spoke so great of Father Biles. And then... Where, where, where was St. Vincent's? In New York. New York. So that's where they brought all the survivors off the mm -hmm. Carpathia mm -hmm. once they came in. And they dressed them in clothes and everything like that. So um, then they went, yeah, they went to New Jersey because they were living in New York. So they went to St. Vincent's and then they went to New Jersey for a short honeymoon. And then um, I just think of my grandfather losing his brother. I mean, that. That's a tragedy in itself. I mean, forgetting the whole tragedy yeah. of the Titanic. I mean, his brother, who was, who they had become so close, they'd become Catholics together. And I'm sure your, your grandfather could say, if I didn't ask him to come to do the wedding, he would, have, he would have been alive in England. You know, in one of the letters, he was thinking of bringing one of the sisters, too, mm. because there were seven children in the family. Mm. So can you imagine if the sister had come, what would have happened? But, but then God he has, ends. God, the, God he has ends a great way of, of, of. He ends the letter with grace. with telling his new mother-in-law, "Thank you for giving me Catherine, who was my grandmother. She is the pearl of the ocean, and that's why in your opening, when you talked about the pearl or whatever you said about the ocean, the pearl of the ocean, and the James Cameron, it, it's." kind of ironic. That wow. They, he's, that's how he closes the letter. I'm sorry, I don't want to that open is it. That, no, I so don't old. open it. I mean, it looks, it, it, these, are, these are treasures to... I have a copy of it, but I... To be... I didn't bring it. My gosh, even these stamps are... Uh, this, this is... Uh, these are relics. You yes, know, they're, they're, they're That's what they are. Oh, my gosh. That's well, uh, his letters will be relics if it yeah. becomes a saint. Yeah. Right. So... You share this with your religion classes and... Yes, I do. 
I share it. Every year I give them a, we spend a whole class talking about Father Biles. Wow. What are some of the questions that the children ask? Like the same questions you've asked. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, they just think it's, they just, they just can't believe it. They just think it's so cool that, that they can't believe that someone would give up their life and not take a seat on a lifeboat and stay with people to pray. So as part of my, you know, I'm a confirmation teacher. I teach the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. So when I try to teach the Holy Spirit to the class and the Holy Spirit's kind of a hard thing to explain to 13 year olds. But I use Father Biles as an example of the Holy Spirit because throughout his life, I think the Holy Spirit used you know, his questioning, the, when you think of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I notice your Bible is open to Isaiah, where they list the gifts. He, he used the, um, you know, the, the knowledge to, and the understanding and everything to change faiths and then to, the, to come and get on the Titanic and come over and the, the piety and the courage and the fortitude that he, you know, all the gifts. And I, I mean, I can tie them all in with Father Biles' life. And I really think that that might help them understand the Holy Spirit a little more. Not, not only help them understand it, I, I think it's a great lesson in life for youngsters to understand that on a couple of levels, I think, Joan. One, one certainly is that that's, that's, that's the Lord's kind of command to us as disciples, you know, that, uh, that we don't just keep our own life so precious that we can't help others all the time. And, uh, and then I think it also tells us that, uh, you know, going back to the old catechism days, I guess, if we, if we wanted to do that, you know, why were we born? To love him and serve him and owe him in this life, to be happy in the next. I think in today's society, we're more concerned with this, this side, not, not just the other side. And yet, and when you're telling me the story, I, I just feel so, so grateful to even share this with you or you sharing the story with me. Just to think that your great uncle, the priest, you know, I can just picture the day he was ordained, just like all of us, and to think that at his last day on earth, I'll say, how many, how many lives he actually shared also into sanctity? Uh, I mean, it's just... Uh, Not right. Exactly. You know, and, and also, uh, how many lives that maybe were saved from the Titanic, that he allowed them to take his place or that he urged them to come up the steps or to get into the boats. And, and, and they too then lived their life. Uh, um, it, uh, it, 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 it's, it, it, martyrdom is a great gift. There were three Irish girls that, that he brought up to the boat decks and one of them went on to become a, a nun. So, you know, she continued to share the gift. But I, I think that he received the sacrament of ordination, which I think you would know better than I do, but that's part of your duty is to stay. Yeah, yeah. See, I have to think not only is it part of your duty as a priest, I think it's part of your duty, so to speak, as a, as a person, person. If you can help others to life, I think that's what that's. But you can I mean, stay with others. We, and, you know, yeah. you're you're a parent. I mean, you know, you do that with your children. I mean, so many thousands and thousands of people all over the world. You know, we do that kind of naturally every day in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and maybe as, as we grow as children, we don't realize that until we get to a certain age ourselves to start to realize that. Oh gosh, this this is what this is all about. You have to tell me though, John, a little bit more about this, uh, the cause to, to sanctity, the cause to sainthood. How, who started that? How did it start? And uh, what's going on? That was a complete surprise to me. One day I got my cell phone rang and it was this reporter from the National Catholic Register who said, um, register of reporter, I'm not sure. There are two. two I know. The one, um, and he Probably told, the register. He told me that about this petition to make Father Biles a saint. I was, it was a complete surprise to me. I didn't know anything about it. His, the pastor in England of the parish, the poor parish that he had been assigned to, had heard his story and thought that he should be, become a saint. And he had petitioned Rome to make him a saint. 
So I, yeah, I was completely surprised. I had no idea that this was even in the works. When did that start? When did, how long ago it did it? It was April 14th, this year. Oh, the, okay, this is something, April 14th. Yeah, that's the day that's sinking, because that's the that's day. That's my birthday. Is it really? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I'm very serious. Well, that's the day the Titanic <laughs> hit the iceberg. I know, no, I knew that, yeah. And it's the day before tax day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, yeah, I was surprised. And they picked that day because that was his first day in the parish, and it was the day they hit the iceberg. So it was a very significant. So what thing. else are they doing? Do you, do you know? Are they? Are he has, they, a, he has a, a prayer that he's put out there. And this is the present pastor of the parish in England. And he wants people to pray this prayer, and I guess if a miracle to see comes, a, see, a, see if a miracle would come. Mm -hmm. And I want to I, I so want to get a, in touch with him somehow because I have all this information I think he should see it oh, yeah. and I've tried to get get in touch with him but so and far I haven't been able to he hasn't answered or uh, no I haven't really I haven't sat down and written him a letter oh okay well, but I've haven't... had other people tell me oh they'll tell him and, and so it was, oh but no, I need to get sit on that down. computer thing and I know, you know, I know I mean, I have today to. it's it's easy to do those things I know I know I do I have this to is do this it. is ex this is really exciting especially that uh, this is your family do you have any any I'll say relic or anything that of your uh, of your great uncle I mean was there anything uh, he must have had clothes and stuff back in England uh, or, or, his, or his books or any of his writings? Oh my gosh, I or have his books. Or one of his homilies or anything? I didn't bring his books with me, but I uh -huh. have his books, English History of the English People. It was a set of four very beautiful uh -huh. leather-bound books. And when Sandy came, they, I had them in an airtight container and oh. they got wet. I still have them. Of course, I didn't throw them away, but they're... Take them to an expert. Take them to somebody. They can. They can. They can. They can do those kind of repairs for you. Okay, but I have. I mean, I have all his conversion letters. Uh huh. So, I mean, I have. Well, listen. I, I think all of those, Joan, that you're you're living in, in great divine time, and we're going to ask the people to keep praying and maybe even asking. You, you know, uh, you know, Father Thomas, to, to intercede. God bless. You know, look at your own life and the sanctity in your own families and ask God to keep growing so that we too can pray for each other and be blessed with each other. Thanks, John. That was wonderful.